What is the goal of humanity? Is there other life in the universe? What happens to our soul after death? No human being can answer these questions. And maybe excluding the second question, we have not made any progress in the last centuries. Humanity thinks about these questions since the start of our civilization. And many of the most influential people in history have provided approaches to answering these questions. It is therefore no surprise that these questions were also posed to an AI after powerful algorithms were developed that are able to understand questions and return answers in a written text format. If AI was capable of answering these questions in a completely new but comprehensible way, this would be a milestone not only for the development of AI technology, but also in the history of humanity. An interesting experiment was done by the University of New South Wales in Sydney. They used a conditional transformer language model to answer the questions I mentioned in addition to other questions. I won't go much into the technical details of the model here, but one thing to mention is that language AI is one of the more advanced types of AI technology. You can basically do anything with AI, but some things are just better suited for it. A simple rule is, if you can explain your goal and your environment or input parameters using math, then it's easy to use AI. If you want to predict credit scores from 0 to 100 based on age, income and total depth, that's easy. It's just numbers in, numbers out. But language is not math. I wish it was, but it's not. There are just so many rules and exceptions from these rules that you need a very, very large AI and also a gigantic set of data. You can implement a model with less than 100 parameters and it would do its job perfectly for some use cases. The language model for this experiment had 1.6 billion parameters and it was developed by Salesforce. It's not that kind of AI that you want to train on your personal computer, but they implemented an API so everyone can use it conveniently and that's what they did at UNSW. The goal was to compare the answers by the AI to the answers of some of the most important opinion leaders of mankind. These included religious leaders such as Jesus Christ, Mohammed, the Dalai Lama and Pope Francis, as well as philosophers such as Plato, Nietzsche and more modern figures such as Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk. The answers to these existential questions given by those very different personalities are of course also very different, even though there are more similarities than you would think. There's no way to speak of right and wrong answers here, and for me it's important to emphasize that each of the ideologies involved has its raison d'etre. The point is not to determine who's right, but how well AI does in context of such questions. But how do you find out if you don't know the right answers? There's no numerical error to determine here. Well, the experiment therefore did not test correctness, but whose answer was judged to be the best one by a test group of 1000 random people. It is a matter of who said it best, not of who said it right. We will now look at the results of the investigation and don't worry, we will also see how the AI answered these specific questions. Surprisingly, AI seems to be doing very well. It even takes the top position in three questions and it's not even close in two central questions about humanity. But how does it work? And where does AI get its answers from? Or does it create answers out of nothing? It is relatively simple, even though the mechanisms behind it are very complex. The AI reads books, web pages and other forms of text from the internet and learns both the structure of the language as well as information on certain topics. However, this also means that the AI does not really answer the question itself, because all information it has at its disposal comes from sources created by humans. It's still a language processing AI, not a philosophy AI. But was the AI the winner of the experiment at UNSW? No, it achieves a respectable second place, which is actually a big surprise. But the victory goes to Gandhi. The relevancy of this experiment can be debated because of the small sample size, but the fact that the AI does so well is indeed remarkable. One explanation could be that the internet is relatively young. Much of the text on the internet is no more than 30 years old, so the AI learns from more up-to-date sources and its answers are therefore possibly easier to understand 
than the answers of an old Greek guy. This could also explain the good performance of Pope Francis and Stephen Hawking, but cannot be the reason for the triumph of Gandhi. Now let's finally see how AI answered the questions from the beginning. And as always, I think it is more appropriate to have it read by an AI generated voice. So what is the goal of humanity? The goal of human life is not merely to be born into the world, but also to grow up in it. To this end, it should be possible for each child to acquire knowledge, develop their capacities, and express themselves creatively. Is there other life in the universe? The Milky Way is not alone. Our galaxy and the nearby Andromeda galaxy are also host to active star-forming regions. Astronomers have discovered over 100 galaxies with populations of at least 1 billion stars, which means that many more could potentially support live. What happens to our soul after death? The soul, or stuff that makes us who we are, continues on as long as there is something keeping it from falling apart. If you were hit by a car and died instantly, your body would decompose immediately. Your consciousness would also cease at that instant. Interesting answers, right? And it kind of makes me want to argue with an AI about it, and I'm sure this will be possible at some point. This is another experiment that shows how advanced AI is. And if you want to learn more about this exact experiment, I will link the source below. Thank you for watching. See you all next time.